have a simple idea. You think Tesla stock is gonna go down. So you wanna buy a Tesla put to profit off of Tesla's plummet. That should be simple, right? But wait, there are so many strike prices. Which one should you choose? Would one strike price make you more money than another? Do some strike prices have higher chance of winning? While there are a lot of strike prices to choose from, not all strike prices are created equal. There are for sure some strike prices that I would personally avoid if I were to buy a put. So in this video, I'm going to use the most user-friendly language to explain how to pick a strike price. And I will do it in two chapters. Number one. What are some ways to pick a strike price when buying a put option contract? How does it work? I'll walk through six ways and explain one by one. Once you understand those, how would you do it on Robinhood app? I'll walk you through, I'll show you the one real put option contract that I bought lately. Don't worry, you don't need a finance background to understand this video. And also, you don't have to smash the like button just yet to the, in the very end. If you find this video useful or insightful, hold me accountable. Now, let's... Get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley, and I'm here today to use design to explain how to pick a strike price when buying put option contracts. There are four key concepts that will affect how you pick a strike price. How put option contract works, delta, theta, the moneyness, in the money, out of money. If you already know all those, great. You can use the time code to skip right to chapter one. If you don't know how some of them work, no worries, you can check out some of the videos that I have made already in the description box down below. Or you just follow along, I will spend the least amount of time to explain the basics of all those four concepts. Simply put, pun intended, buy puts, buy put options, buy put option contracts, they refer to the same thing, just different people say it differently. If you think Tesla stock will go down, you can make money by buying a Tesla put. Each put option contract will have a Greek called Delta. Using this 200 strike Tesla put as an example, it means for every dollar Tesla stock goes down, the price of this Tesla put contract will go up by $45 because of this 0.45 delta in this put. When that happens, you can sell the put back to the market and make a profit. Different strike prices will have different delta. Each put will also have a Greek called theta. It's the time decay. If Tesla stock stays flat for one day, this 200 strike Tesla put option contract will lose about $18. Different strike prices, again, will also have different data. The last concept, each put has a strike price and it can be in the money or out of the money. These strike prices are in the money. When you buy a put, you want it to be in the money. You want it to expire in the money. You want it to be in the money as long as possible. These strike prices are out of the money. They are below the current share price. You can buy it out of the money put, of course, but if it expires out of the money, your put price will go to zero, meaning you're gonna lose it all, and you don't want that to happen. Now you know all the basics, we are ready for chapter one. Six different ways to pick a strike price for put option contracts. So let's use Tesla put as an example. The first way to choose a strike price is to base on a price target that you have in mind. For example, you think Tesla is going to go down, the stock is going to go down. You think it's going to go down to maybe 150 by this date, April 21st, the expiration date. Then you might buy a put, buy put with a strike price that is, let's see, 150 plus whatever this premium is that you pay for, that would be the actual strike price that you're aiming for. The price target is 150, you need to pay 430 for it, so your strike price is about 154.3. Or you can go by percentage. You think Tesla stock will go down 25% from this 198, 199 price point. It rounds up also about like 150, so very similar scenario. In fact, Robinhood has already done this for you. So you see here there's a break even. This one, it means if Tesla stock at this expiration date end up to be 149.87, let's round it to 150, and you buy this 155 strike put, then you break even. Which translates to, if your price target for Tesla by this date is 150, you are actually looking at this 155 strike price. 
If your price target is 154, then maybe you're looking at a 160 strike. So let's say Tesla stock ends up at 149.87. When this put expires, you break even. If it goes down even more to 149, 145, 135, that's when you actually will see a profit. Of course, during the time that you have bought the put and the expiration date, you can sell it back to the market if you see enough profit. So that's the first way. The second way is to look for strike prices with low cost but high payout, especially if you expect a big drop. For example, if you believe Tesla stock will go down a lot, but you don't know how much, it's essentially a small gamble in this case, and if you feel comfortable losing all the money that you buy a put, and since it's not a big dollar amount anyways, you're okay with that, then you buy a very out of the money strike prices. So this is the price pill. UI component, anything above it is in the money for puts. Anything below it is out of the money. So you buy a very out of money. So let's scroll down, down, down. Maybe you are looking at, let's say 110. You can buy this very out of the money, 110 strike price for Tesla put for $88. It's very cheap. If Tesla stock actually swings down that much from $199, which had happened before, that payout can be 10x, 20x. The downside of this here is that Tesla stock might not hit that low of a price from $200, from $199. So you might not win with your first try. If you do want to catch that one-time big drop, you might need to keep buying it over and over and wait for that to happen. And that can be costly over time because you never know when that big drop will come. But this is still one way to pick a strike price. The third way is to play safe to minimize theta decay. For example, you believe Tesla stock is going to go down. You don't want theta decay to eat into your put price too much. Then you're going to look for more in the money strike price. So this is the current price in the money. So it's anything up here, anything above this share price a higher number strike price for put because they have lower theta. If you look at this 250, let's go to 250, 250 put, it will have a theta of 0.13. It's going to lose $13 per day if Tesla stock stays flat. For a, let's say 300 Tesla put, its theta is 0.07. This 300 put will lose seven dollars per day if tesla stock stays flat so how much theta decay are you willing to accept how much are you okay to lose if tesla stock stays flat every single day if it's 13 dollars then yeah you're looking at the 250 strike price tesla put and that costs you about 5.4 k the fourth way is to pick a strike price that is at the money or slightly out of the money. You think Tesla stock is overvalued at the current share price of 199, 200 bucks, then it makes sense to buy an add the money put so you don't have to pay too much compared to like deep in the money Tesla put. In this case, it will be 200 strike Tesla put that costs you about 2K. Or even better, you can buy a few strikes out at an even lower cost, maybe 190 for an even higher payout ratio. If that's what you're thinking, you may be looking at this 190 that costs you about 1.5K. The fifth way is to use Delta. Pick a strike price that has high Delta because higher Delta signals higher probability of winning. Again, you believe Tesla stock will go down, you can buy a high Delta put like a 0.75 Delta or 0.8 Delta. Let's say 0.8. That will be something like a 270 strike, 0.8 delta. Another way to look at this is which one has a lower probability of losing all money. For example, it's less likely for a 270 put to lose it all compared to a 210 strike Tesla put. Because for the 270 strike to lose it all, Tesla has to climb up 70 bucks for it versus for a 210 strike, you can lose it all if Tesla climbs up $10. If I want more buffer and to be more conservative, I can even go further out to like 0.9 Delta. 
which is equivalent to let's say maybe 340 strike price has the 0.9 delta that's more safe generally speaking that's the idea you can pick a strike price just based on the delta the sixth way to pick a strike price if you want max protection then you want the highest strike price the highest delta that you can find let's say you owe 100 tesla shares you believe the stock is going to go down but you don't want to sell any of your shares you don't want your account to go down either so you can buy a tesla put to hedge against it remember delta for every dollar tesla stock drops the put price will go up by the delta amount so when you buy a put with a 1.0 delta then if tesla stock drops one dollar and you have 100 shares so your net account value will drop 100 bucks your put will also gain a hundred dollars so net zero your account is unaffected that's a perfect hedge for that to happen just to find a tesla put with a strike price that has a 1.0 delta unfortunately it's almost impossible to find a 1.0 delta with an expiration that is months away so the closest you can see is a strike price of 600 and it has a delta of 0.91 meaning for every dollar tesla stock goes down your tesla put will gain 91 dollars it's not 1.0 you don't get 100 bucks but still it's better than 0.6 delta in terms of hedging so you will go with the highest delta that you can find which means a 600 strike price for the put and that costs you about almost 40k now take a look at all of these in a condensed list we can see depending on your style your priority your analysis and your reasoning the strike price that you pick for your put can be quite different i have my favorite way to pick a strike price for puts these days and let me show you this real example which leads us to chapter two i bought a put on carvana so for those who don't know carvana is an online used car dealer company you buy a used car from them online on the website and then it will deliver it to you at your doorstep so a few things to note here for this business for this company itself is not profitable yet you can look at Robinhood type in CVNA if you scroll down to the earnings section you can see the EPS it's all negative it also has declining earnings declining negative earnings if you look at this website you can see the share dilution they keep increasing share amount the share count to compensate the employees and then if you hop into their q3 2022 earnings report their balance sheet you can see they have very little cash a lot of debt especially long-term debt the total asset is not that much more than the total debt from a fundamental business standpoint that's not great also from a stock standpoint you can see it has gone up over 300 percent in one month what the beautiful stock yeah not great either when something goes up so much so fast it's gonna crash it's gonna go down time will correct everything with those reasonings i went ahead with my fourth way of picking a strike price pick a strike that is at the money or slightly out of the money so if you open up Robinhood, you type in cvna carvana and then you go to trade and then trade options i will when uh, I go with the June 16th one, which is about four months away as the expiration date. And you can see this plus one here, 12.5 strike put. That's the one I bought. If you were to buy it, you just click the price tag and then hit the bottom continue. And then you review, place an order. I bought this Carvana put on February 2nd, which at that time, the Carvana stock price was about $17.60. In hindsight, it was like the recent peak, so I got lucky. So at that time, the add the money put will be the 17.5 strike price, but I chose the two strikes out from add the money, which will be the 12.5 strike. So I can pay a little bit less and the payout ratio will be higher. If you look at my Carvana put position, it cost me $440. That's the cost. I'm okay losing it all when I bought it, I accepted that risk so i bought this put so far the carvana stock price has gone down quite a bit therefore now my 12.5 strike put is in the money it's above the current share price it's in the money and that's great it went from out of the money to in the money and if you look at the return 
the current price of this put is $588. That means I'm up $148, 33% in about a month period. Not too shabby. I placed a limit sell order at 700 bucks, which means if Carvana stock keeps tanking and its put price will go up, and if it hits $700, Robinhood will sell this put at $700 for me automatically. And at that point, I will lock in a gain of $260. And that is my Carvana put, and I will make some follow-up videos to show you the progress about where this is heading. All right, guys, with those six ways of choosing a strike price and my Carvana example, strike prices and all that complicated overall, aren't they? Which way is your favorite to pick a strike price? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you learned anything new, congratulations. Destroy the like button down below to help the YouTube algorithm to support this very small channel, and I really appreciate it. Since those six ways of strike price picking are based on personal inputs and analysis, are there more objective way of looking at strike prices? Would some strike prices be inherently objectively better than others? Are there any rules that are always true? Are there any patterns? Fortunately, there are. So consider subscribing so you don't miss the next user-friendly finance video about strike prices. And as a final note, other than delta, theta, in the money, out of money, at the money, there's actually another thing that related to strike price called intrinsic slash extrinsic value. They're all in a dynamic system. So what role does it play in affecting the strike price, the strike price picking, and how do they work? If you haven't heard of it yet, no worries, I have used my best design thinking and craft to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to support this channel. Keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers!